Well, I was looking at our itinerary for the day, and we are heading to San Juan Capistrino. First of all, this morning, it's a Spanish mission here in California. And then we're going to head over to the battleship Iowa. I'm so tired of looking at these walls. I'm breaking free. I'm going to do my thing. Baby, won't you come with me? I'm going to do my thing. Baby. Inside the mission, San Juan Capistrino. The soldiers were called leather jacket soldiers because they wore a leather jacket to protect them against bows and arrows. Most of them are 16 years old, practicing Catholics. And they had to agree to at least 10 years of service. And when they got out, they were given land grants, some of them, and pensions. And while they were there, they got a signing bonus and a regular salary. So it was a pretty good deal for them, for a 16-year-old. Some of the equipment they had, cartridges. Saddle, it's like a wooden saddle. <laughs> Here's their beds. <laughs> Most of the soldiers came from the Presidio in San Francisco and were assigned to the different missions around. And they could run around in groups of six to 12. Right. Soldiers. And they said it was pretty monotonous when they were here. That they thought they were going to be all excited and be soldiering, but what it ended up that they were just here protecting the different missions, and they were more into construction and blacksmithing. Once in a while, there would be something exciting to do, but really, it was just a monotonous thing that they did for like about ten years. And if they were lucky, then they got a piece of land when they were done. Memorial to the soldiers. And the fallen compadres, it's an empty saddle. It's like one of the bells. That... Looks like they have a memorial or a veterans thing set up. It is Memorial Day weekend here. The building you're standing in was rebuilt in 1970s on the original 18th century foundation of the mission. And in 1970s and 80s, they excavated this area. So. This is a wine bat. Yeah, it's a wine bat. It's a tradition of wine making. It started with the California missions. Because of the difficulties associated with importing wine from Mexico. That's pretty cool. So you put the grapes in here. Yeah. And it stomp on them and it would drain out the hole. Yeah. So lower that, which is outside. Yeah, it's really cool. So after they stomped on the wine, the wine, the juice anyway, came out here to this vat. The yeah, garden area where the drying rack is. You can see all the equipment they would have used. That's why there was such a need for blacksmith. Structures, the oldest ones in California, are used to make wrought iron. They were unearthed in 1930s. These are tallow cooking stoves. It's where they put animal fat in and to boil it down and they would make candles, soaps, grease, ointments, anything you make out of animal fat was made right here. The chapel was used at one time for a storage. They stored olives and barley until a new priest arrived and he basically cleaned it out and made it into a church again. This was after the earthquake of 1812 that destroyed their main church in town, so they had to come here back to come to church.
Look how they put support structures in, in case you have another earthquake. Like they made a lot of wine here. They did, and they said you can see why they would need the blacksmithing because of all the the metal stuff, like for the wine barrels to hold it together, the nails, cooking, the nails. He's up there doing the maintenance. Wagons, the wagon wheels. California's got a lot of beautiful flowers. Yes, it does. If you ever get a chance, this is a good place to come visit. It's just south of Los Angeles. It was, uh, what, how many minutes? I think it's about 40 minutes from Long Beach. From Long Beach, yeah. Some of the ironwork here. I hope you can see it really well. It's one of the gate poles. Uh, locking mechanism, the bar that goes across. It's cool. One of the old locks. Another bar, or another pole. And the gate itself has got all wrought iron. Both enjoyed the Mission Capistrano, San Juan Capistrano. Uh, it's a really neat place to go visit here in California. They call it the jewel of the missions. We've been to a few missions, but yeah, this was the best by far. Yeah, the, the altar was just beautiful. So, but they had yeah. more developed. You know. Yeah, definitely. So, and the town looks really, uh, it's touristy, but yeah. but yeah, it was pretty cool. There was a really good barbecue place across the street, too, if you have time for uh It's just hard supper. to find a place to park. Can you find a place to park at your hardest? Uh, your best bet is to go to the new chapel, which is at the end of the square there um which is part of the mission but it's not attached it's like you can't walk through it but there is parking there yeah okay so we left the san juan capistrino mission and hightailed it back up to um, long beach where the uss iowa is docked and we have tickets to do a tour of the uss iowa and we're on deck right now so we're going to take a Quick tour and see what this is all about. Hi there, how you guys doing? Just Good. fine, how are you? Good. So the anchor on this ship weighs 15 tons, 30,000 pounds. It was quite an operation bringing it up or letting it out. Wow. Each of these chains, uh, each link in the chain weighs 130 pounds. <laughs> so I always ask little kids, how many sailors would it take to haul in that anchor? <laughs> <laughs> Were you on the ship? Uh, not on this ship. On no. this one. So what they what they did is the they have this thing called the capstan and uh, it goes around like this and it's got like sprockets that stick out and catch on the chain and drag it up and then the chain uh, goes down. down into what's called the chain locker. It's two decks below us um, and the speed is controlled by these wheels over here. They turn them to slow it down or speed it up. Um, speed up what the ch the chain? Yeah, the speed of how long it, uh, okay. how fast it takes. It to bring it up or to let it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of them was the speed, one of them was the direction, which way does it go, you know, and how fast and all that. And all the machinery that operates this is right below us. On the deck below. Now, one of these guns exploded, right? Yes, the, it did. The accident. 1989. Yeah, it was, it was right around this time, that's why I remember. Uh, well, it was on turret 2, which is the second one up there. The second one? The middle gun. The middle gun. Right. And, um, the story is that, you know, normally they load the gun, they put in a, project, a bullet, they call it a projector. Right. Uh -huh. Six bags of gunpowder to fire it. So they had it all loaded, and then they closed the hatch in the back and pulled the trigger. But this time, they had it all loaded, but before they were able to close the hatch in the back, the gunpowder exploded. Uh -huh. And it created a huge fireball and yeah. fire, and instead of forcing the projectile out, it all went back and down. The operation of these guns goes down five decks. The fire went down five decks, killed 47 men, like instantaneously. Took an hour and a half to put out the fire. Yeah. Yeah, and I then, remember when that happened. We were in service at that time, but I remember it happened. They did three different investigations afterwards, trying to figure out what made that gunpowder explode. There are three or four or five theories, none of which were proved conclusively. There's evidence to point to 
different things. Different things yeah. So they had not really figure it out what caused it. No. The USS Iowa is the exact same size as the uh, USS Missouri. Missouri, which is the big mo that we, we actually went on it in Hawaii. And it's also the same size as the battleship Midway that we went on last year in San Diego. The only difference is the configuration. Yep, that's a powder bag. And there was, what do you say, six of them that they put in? Uh, I think it's, it's, it's Yeah, he said six. And it, before they could get it closed, it exploded and went backwards. So now my, my candle's all loaded up. So how do I light it? I need a primer. The primer can be a blank round like this one, or it could be electric. And it gets put in the gun door, and when you close the breech, it's now pointing into the black powder. If the bag is cockeyed and it hits the silk without the black powder, it doesn't start the ignition. So it hits the black powder and in less than a second you have a chain reaction that builds up a gas pressure. It doesn't explode. It's not supposed to explode. So these are all the places the USS Iowa has traveled. Spent a lot of time over here in Japan, of course, during World War II. Well, the time in Norfolk, in the Bahamas. And some time over here in the Middle East. Navy Occupation Service ribbon, which was any ship for West Berlin from 1945 to 1990. We also got some Korean ones in the Fourth World War II. That's when it seen most of its battle. Okay, we want another pool. You go first. Just watch your head. It's the original 1943 bell to the USS Iowa. To keep the ship here, the people can visit your tickets that you purchased to visit the ship and the gift shop helps support that. You have to pay for the booth to leave. It's only two dollars for... For an hour. So I would say the visit here to Iowa, I would plan anywhere from an hour to two hours. We were lucky because we got here first thing in the morning and you have to go to the right gym. And there was uh, no crowd at all. So it's a Memorial Day weekend, it is getting busier, but when we got here, there was only maybe... If it's a quarter mile, turn right onto North Harbor Boulevard. There's only about six people ahead of us. When you say six to ten people yeah. ahead of us. So... It was nice you got to talk to the you people. You got to talk here. to the guys, that, and they were all, you know, first thing in the morning. They were wanting to tell us stories. Uh, some of the guys weren't on this ship particular, but they knew the facts about it. Uh, there was a few that actually were on this ship. There was... A, one that was on the Missouri. Here's a pizza. Missouri. Every hour, every hour. 
I know, this sounds pretty good. Yep. So we have ordered a Supreme pizza. The Geelands? The Geelands on the shore. Shore something. What's it called? Shore? Um, shoreline. Shoreline. Shore pier. It's the shore pier shops. But anyways, and I got a loco. Co co loco? Coco loco. Coco loco. Coco loco. Get our pizza. And bruschetta. It's really good. Michelle got a, what's it called? Polo Loco. Mm -hmm. And I got water here. Nice restaurant, kind of busy right now. We got in before the crowd hit. Queen Mary. It's currently closed due to COVID. You can't tour it. Shopping center we were just at, it was called, it was not really a shopping center, it's a tourist type destination called Shoreline Village here in Long Beach. It also has, if you keep walking to the right of it, is the aquarium. Long Beach. Is this Pikes Pier? Well, I think that's going to end our day here in the uh, Long Beach area. We've gone down to San Juan Capistrino and visited the USS Iowa. And we're going to end our day here at the Long Beach Pier. Um, they've got a nice little Ferris wheel. It lights up at night. And some, uh, some other activities. It's a nice family atmosphere down here. But if you haven't subscribed to us yet, please do so. Thanks for watching. And we'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.